right here is the main selling point of the HRV. When someone who is six foot six can sit behind someone who is six foot six while still retaining 24 cubic feet of cargo space in the back, you know the packaging is solid. Okay, let's talk about styling, which in this case I think might be in the eye of the beholder. Maybe true beauty really does lie on the inside. That's just something ugly people say. Then again, these 17 inch wheels don't really do it for me. Neither does the sort of once you see it, you can't unsee it Subaru Outback roofline. And there isn't really anything to align it with Honda's more recent offerings either. I really like Honda's latest offerings and I don't feel like the HRV really fits in all that well with them. And nowhere is that really more apparent than up front. Yikes. It's like somebody wondered aloud if there was any possible way to make the Ford Escape worse and then no one else in the room slapped them for saying that. Just shut up. Look at the current Civic. Look at the upcoming CRV. Look at the brand new Honda Pilot. Look at the freaking Accord that just dropped. What 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 the heck happened, Honda? Did your, did your balls drop off? Thankfully, someone else must have designed the rear end because it actually looks pretty good. I, I really like the lighting elements back here and it might not be unique, but it's certainly not offensive. Overall though, the styling seems like a bit of a missed opportunity, especially in such a crowded segment. It was a chance to stand apart. And, and this is a segment where sort of style in terms of some models are, are sort of competing on style. They're becoming more style. So I feel like the HRV could have done a little bit more here to define itself within this segment. Now I'm starting with the interior here mainly for two reasons. Oh, also I'm in a parking deck because it just decided to rain today and there's a wind advisory thanks to the hurricane turning towards Georgia. So cool. He was mad. The HRV is supremely efficient in its packaging. Definitely one of the better vehicles in the class. It offers excellent front seat space, really, really respectable rear seat space, and it does all that while still preserving its significant cargo space. And it doesn't just look spacious, it is spacious. It's comfortable and thoughtfully laid out. I love the storage kind of right under the center console here. It's like right under the gear shift lever. That is the perfect place for sunglasses and things like that. It's got a deep center console as well. And it's very just practical. It's laid out in a very practical way. These seats are also quite good despite the lack of lumbar adjustment. They're pretty comfortable. I've been in them for long stretches. I've had to do a lot of driving this week. So I don't really have any complaints about the seats. The leather feels good. The materials in general in here feel really good. They might not quite be Mazda good, but like this is a nice place to spend time. It feels like they're making an effort at nearly $31,000. So I do appreciate that soft touch up here. Very nice padded elbow rests. Hard in the middle, but that's okay. Dash is nice, soft touch in a lot of places. So overall, I feel like this is a more premium feeling interior. Maybe a little bit too much road noise though. On the technology front, you have wireless Apple CarPlay, which is appreciated. Honda's system isn't like super sexy or anything, but it's pretty functional. Like I don't really have any problems with it. You have heated seats, you got the sunroof, you got Honda Sensing Safety, which is nice. One of my favorites, Honda Sensing is just really good. Although I will note, just in case you're wondering, it did give me this like false lane mitigation departure warning a couple times, which I'm not really sure. Maybe the sensor is dirty up front or the windshield's dirty wherever it's reading the road, but I wasn't really worried about it, but it did come up like, like something was happening and 
nothing was happening. Oh, and the second reason? Well, it's mainly because I think the exterior styling is about as exciting as a jar of Gerber baby food, and not the good kind that you secretly eat when your children aren't looking. I'm talking about the bad kind that you legitimately feel guilty for having fed them in the first place. Right. But you don't need to be an infant to fit back here. The HRV could easily serve as a small SUV for your growing family, while still having enough space in the rear to drive your adult friends around. You know, assuming you remove the baby seats first before actually trying to fit someone in here, which you could do very easily because it does have such a spacious back seat and a large cargo area to carry the baby seats in. And there is actually a good amount of space back here, but surprisingly, it's just sort of average among its main competitors. The Toyota Corolla Cross actually offers one cubic foot more space, and the Kia Seltos offers two. But this segment is more crowded than a Chick-fil-A drive through on a Friday afternoon, so you have to wonder how the HRV is gonna differentiate itself from its competitors. See, take a look here at where the HRV ranks among kind of like similarly sized and priced small SUVs. So that means the HRV has to stand out in other ways, right? It, it has to make up for this kind of averageness in some other way, right? Like in the powertrain, right? You're expecting this HRV to have some sort of Honda VTEC equipped screamer that defies all logic. Like, how did they possibly put this powertrain in this little vehicle? What the hell? You know, just like Hondas of old, where a sort of typically normal commuter car might have some wicked awesome powertrain, and you would be absolutely incorrect. What? No. The HRV is powered by a 158 horsepower, two liter, four cylinder, making an amount of torque and running through a continuously variable kick in the nuts. Is it fine for family commuter duty? I don't care! Does it get surprisingly excellent fuel economy? Oh no, God! I averaged about 26 miles per gallon in pretty much all kind of suburban daily driving, and that's not ideal in a vehicle of this size in this category. It's also not ideal for a vehicle that's this slow. Yeah, the powertrain here is just average, okay? To give you an idea of how average it is, we're talking zero to 60 in almost 10 seconds. If you don't have a point of reference, that's slow. Not that it matters, because I'm in stop and go traffic next to this trash Mercedes Benz and it's horrible exhaust. The throttle and brake calibration are great. Hondas typically drive really, really well, and, and this one does, it, it, just not quickly, um, but the brakes feel decently progressive and firm. The throttle is nicely calibrated. The continuously variable transmission is also nicely calibrated. It doesn't zing the revs. It's mostly unobtrusive. The engine doesn't sound like especially cool or anything, but it's not annoying, it's not grating, especially in traffic. But I wonder what the benefit of that CVT is. If this car only gets sort of middling fuel economy, like 26 miles per gallon is what I'm averaging right now. I got it on the screen right now, 20, 25 right now in stop and go traffic. Um, that's not great. Like, that's really not great. So why have the CVT? I mean, it doesn't seem like it's offering much of a benefit here. One thing that does feel typical Honda excellent is the steering, not only in its sort of weight, which is perfect for a vehicle like this, not too heavy, not too light, reasonably accurate, not really any feel, but then what does have real feel these days? But just the way the steering wheel feels in the hand, it's a very nice wheel. It's small enough to feel kind of sporty. It's got the small central hub. I, I just like it. I like what Honda's doing with the interior 
colors. Some people have been complaining that they all kind of look alike, but I don't mind. It feels purposeful. It feels functional, and it's kind of befitting of this car. It's not trying to be too sporty. It does look like the Civic, and the Civic is phenomenal. The Civic is phenomenal. I don't know why you would buy this over, like, a fairly loaded Civic, because the Civic is phenomenal. You keep using the horn. Now what about the ride quality? Because you're going to be spending time in this car, right? So what's the ride quality like? Uh, it's good. It's like too good if this makes sense because Hondas are typically pretty sporty. Um, I would say that Mazda sort of rules in that sportiness category and then Honda is like right there with them. Maybe as a more all around sportiness whereas Mazda's sort of more single minded sort of sporty where it's like that's their primary reason for existing. This car is sprung very softly. This is like almost a, a Honda that's too comfortable. It's too soft. It, it could use a little bit more firmness and I wouldn't mind. Now you, Joe Average Consumer, or J Joe Z Average Consumer. What in the hell's diversity? You might be like, I don't want my Honda HRV to handle too sporty, and I understand that. Body control is excellent. You don't have a bunch of rocking or head toss. The body control is superb. But I like a little bit more of a firmer ride, like a little bit more of a sort of Germanic ride quality, which I think Mazda does very well, and the Civic does very well. This is based on that platform, but here it's a little softer. It doesn't feel as confidence inspiring as the Civic. It doesn't feel like if you wanted to, if you were so inclined, you could just like chuck this thing around and have a good time. I would definitely not do that. On the handling road, which we're definitely not on because I'm stuck in traffic right now, on the handling road, for what this is, it handles exceptionally well body control is fantastic uh, Mazda is probably a little bit better but this is very good also there's this dude in a old Honda Civic who's just driving right in front of me right now for some unknown reason I guess he saw me talking to a camera and was like this guy's busy I'll just cut him off and finally one benefit that this does offer that I'm not really experiencing because it's November in Georgia which means it's 80 degrees yesterday and 50 degrees today but one benefit that this does offer is all-wheel drive and so if you live in a northern climate with ice and snow, you might appreciate the all-wheel drive. I certainly don't need it down here. I certainly don't care. I also wonder if maybe it's contributing to a little understeeriness. This thing feels like on the handling road that it was pushing even more than I would expect. I mean, again, this is based on the Civic and the Civic is phenomenal, all right? And so I was expecting maybe the same level of phenomenalness out of this. I'm just not getting it. It's good. It's very good. But is it civic good? No. Competition is where this conversation gets really sticky with the small and smaller SUV class having options and offerings from literally everyone, literally every manufacturer and brand, even the Germans. The Germans. The Mazda CX-30 drives better than pretty much anything in this class. The recently redesigned Chevy Trax looks infinitely better than the model it replaces. And the Toyota Corolla Cross is available as a fuel sipping hybrid. At $31,000, the Honda HRV does give you a lot. It's got plenty of interior space, it's got decent driving dynamics, and it's got a relatively mature and upscale feeling interior. But the Mazda CX-30 is even nicer inside and it drives noticeably better. The Chevy Trax that just debuted is going to have even more cargo space, and the Toyota Corolla Cross gets quite a lot better fuel economy. So, should you buy a Honda HRV? Well, at 31 grand in this EXL trim, it does seem a little bit stiff. And I wonder if you would be better off trading some of the niceties at this price for a more reasonably priced model, where the kind of virtues of the HRV would stand out a little bit more. I would absolutely cross shop as many vehicles in this category as you were interested in, because so many offerings in this category give you a potential reason to buy them. I couldn't give you a definitive 
answer. I don't think you should or shouldn't buy the HRV. I think you really need to sit and drive and experience one of these vehicles and choose the one that kind of best fits your priorities. You might really like the Mazda CX-30, but you might be put off by its relatively small 20 cubic feet of cargo space, and you might want something bigger. Or you might prize those driving dynamics and choose that despite its smaller cargo space. At the end of the day, the Honda HRV has many of the virtues you're probably probably looking for in a vehicle in this class. But unlike Hondas of old, it doesn't really do anything specifically to separate itself from the rest of its mainstream competitors, the way that the Civic and the Accord most noticeably do. They are unequivocally the best cars in their class, and I can recommend them wholeheartedly. But to recommend this above some of the other compelling offerings would feel disingenuous. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for being a part of the channel. I do apologize that I had to film this thing in a parking deck, which makes it look like I'm reviewing a car and then about to have, go have a fight club or something. Although I do think that this space could be used for artistic purposes, but that's neither here nor there. I really appreciate you watching this review, and if you found it useful, I'd appreciate you sharing it, liking it, and if you're so inclined, even subscribing to the channel for more content in the basement of a parking deck because it's raining outside. Whatever. Until next time, please drive safe, and I'll see you in the next review. All right, peace. That must be the muffler delete mod. Uh-oh. Got too many things rattling around the car.